the truth. How can we stop weaponizing of uh, nukes, like all of, like nuclear power plants? What if is there a way we could stop that? I mean, we don't have to worry about that. Ooh, very interesting. Yes, there are. There um, are ways. I know. Yes. So, um, the reason that Chernobyl uh, melted down is human error and very bad safety precautions, where the nuclear rods were left in the water, which is the coolant and the catalyst. I'll get into that later, um, which caused it to continuously. Um, continuously react until it melted down and caused a giant hole in like 10 floors um the elephant's foot is a result of that very radioactive and it was human error it's it's very similar to uh, a disaster yeah, that a lot of disasters with... happen because of yes human a, error. there was actually a disaster there. that happened with a uh hydroelectric dam uh i believe somewhere in china were very similar to the Chernobyl disaster. Old, it was an old building, old safety precautions, and human error all combined uh, with a structurally weak uh, point to cause a massive flood. Um, so it's not just uh, nuclear reactors that can cause giant uh, disasters, but just old stuff yeah. in general is pretty dangerous. But newer reactors, uh, I think Smart Modular Reactors, SMRs, are a type of reactor that uses gravity to ensure that um, ensure that they aren't uh, melted down. So if oh, yeah, power totally is cut, yes, um, if power is cut to the reactor, then the rods will go out of the water and they'll start cooling off. Um, I mean, we're learning from just, our past mistakes, and that's all we can do to, yes. you know, ease people's yes. worries about nuclear energy. Yes. And uh, speaking of I, uh, the catalyst thing, water is a catalyst for nuclear reactions because um, you can't actually have self-sustaining reactions outside of... Because uh, the neutrons, which are the particle which causes um, self-sustained reactions, because... Um, one of them split one atom splits and neutrons are launched from that atom hit other things are going too fast to hit uh, the nucleuses of or nuclei of the other atoms uh, so water will slow it down enough to be able to smack into a nucleus and cause another reaction that's why um, water is used and stuff um, and it's why it's a catalyst. Very interesting. I didn't know that until uh, a while ago when I watched a video on it. It's very interesting. It's why Chernobyl has um, nuclear fission happening. Or at least, um, yeah, because of water is being trapped down there. Bro, in Chernobyl right now, there is life over there. There are animals that live there. and then. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, the radiation was this... quite big, but... Once they, they put a shield, a nuclear shield around it, uh, and then they put a bigger, better one. Is the radiation around it still recently. there? Or... Yeah. If you go into the reactor, then yes, it is still there. But if you go outside of the reactor, it's not there. And um, if you go outside of the shielding, because there's a giant field, like maybe like a football or two fields, like one or two football fields wide and long and stuff of a uh, nuclear shielding to make sure that uh, all the radiation, any radiation leak does not go to the uh, area surrounding it. The only radiation you'll find is an increase in background radiation, which um, will cause um, an increase in cancer rates, but oh. not by a lot. Like, it's noticeable, but not extreme. Um, and so the why the still you know, less nature... than what fossil fuels well, are causing. I think the yeah yes. the main argument is that like if let's say one nuclear power plant in New in Europe like explodes or like human error happens. Well, here's the it's thing. It's gonna affect um, all its like neighboring countries, isn't it? Like it's here, gonna here's... affect. Um. Yes, but not to the degree that many people imagine. And besides that, uh, reactors don't 
explode because they're not meant to. They're meant to release their all of their energy over a very long period of time. Uh, that's how we get all their energy. They're not meant to explode because if um, that's too much energy that can't be contained. So it's a slow burn, essentially. Uh, mm. So you get more energy out of it. That's why all of the. That's why it's a meltdown, not an explosion. That's why Chernobyl didn't explode. That's why Fukushima didn't explode. Um, that's why it's only the bombs that are exploding because those are specifically designed yeah, they're made to, to be, be yeah. at near um, near critical mass and then pushed straight over critical mass, which causes it to explode. Um, and it's a devastating explosion, as we all learned from World War II. But right. interestingly... Um, Less radiation overall, I believe, because it all uh, goes into like the air in a way. Still, quite a bit of radiation though, but it's the meltdowns that cause a lot of persistent radiation. Oh, okay. Does like when does the meltdown stop? Like, is there a let's say a ten year period or is it a hundred year period? What's like? I guess it depends Chernobyl, on the scale, right? Chernobyl is radioactive. It will remain radioactive until the uranium like decomposes itself okay. that is a few thousand years because oh. uranium's half-life is a long time so chernobyl isn't like the city itself uh which i believe is uh i believe it's a city i'm not sure if the reactor was named chernobyl or not uh but the area around it can be settled it will have increased cancer rates but it yeah. is livable by humans and nature alike. Uh, because all, most, if not all, yeah, most but of the it's radiation probably not is advisable if cancer rates yeah. are still yes. higher. It's in not, not advisable, but it is possible. Probably it's possible. Yes.